Hi, this is David Johnson with Scale Model Guitars in Nashville, Tennessee. I've been working as a repair tech, luthier, and instructor for the last 20 years. Today we're going to go over techniques that you can do yourself to make any guitar play, feel, and sound better. All right, so today we are going to be talking about the output jack, which is the, probably one of the most important components on your electric guitar. The thing to remember about the output jack on a guitar and about any passive uh, electronic system um, is that we don't really turn the guitar off. We, it's always on. What we're doing is we're sending the signal to ground or we're sending it to output. If you look at the output jack, this is just a standard mono output jack. So that's called a TS jack. So this is the tip. That's your hot output. And that's the sleeve. So that's the ground. So you got to think of it like uh, like the the wiring on your house. We have an on off switch. So I turn the switch on, it's on. I turn it off, it just clips it. It turns it off. Guitars passive systems don't work like that. We're either sending the output to uh, the hot output to the tip, or we're sending it to ground, meaning we're squashing. We're turning it off that way. It's essentially and on, on, we're directing which path we're gonna send this output to. So um, another thing you wanna keep in mind too is that is a mono jack. Sometimes we can have a TRS jack, and that would be tip ring sleeve, and that would be for sending stereo signal. So that's not the case here. We're in uh, mono jack time. So what I do is I plug that in to the output jack out of the guitar, and we're making noise. When I turn the volume down, what I'm doing is I'm rolling the signal to the sleeve, to ground. Um, and that strikes the volume. When I turn it up, I'm sending more signal to hot output, and uh, therefore to your amp, and that's what makes the noise. So one thing that can happen with the output jack on a guitar, this is probably one of the most common repair um, issues you're gonna run into. Um, I'd like to mention too, whenever you take any screw out of a guitar, you might notice where I'm holding the Phillips. I'm holding it at the bottom. So see how I removed that screw? That keeps you from scratching it. We do not want to scratch a caster. We want to keep the finish clean. So hold the screwdriver at the bottom, remove the screw. I'm going to show you something that can happen a lot. I get it through the shop all the time. If you plug in the guitar, so that's what it should sound like. Sometimes the nut on the output jack gets loose. Uh, slam that out really quick. So let me just loosen that. So see how that's just loose output jack? What's happening in there is the jack can twist around. If you look at the jack from the inside, I've got two pins on that output jack. The red wire goes down, loops around to hot output. The white wire, in this case, is our ground. So that loops down, goes to uh, the sleeve. So when I plug this in, it's doing this, right? So what happens if that nut gets loose and I let it go long enough, this can twist around and eventually, uh, there's two ways it can go. If the white wire were to fly off of there, it would just not make any noise. You'd plug it in, it doesn't do anything. If that, uh, or the red wire rather, if the white wire were to go and twist itself off, you've just lost your ground and it'll make this noise. You hear that? That's what happens when we're not able to send uh, the signal to ground. That's would uh, what like what would be like if you had uh, an on-off switch. We don't want off. We want to be able to send that signal to ground. So, what we're gonna do here? I wanted to show you this. We're just gonna go ahead and replace this output jack anyway. Uh, the thing about uh, Squires, a lot of overseas guitars, is that the metal that these the components are made of is actually this kind of cheap pot metal. It's not good quality. Uh, if I showed you this one, this is a Switchcraft output jack. 
that is probably the most common component. Uh, amps use it, guitars use it. Um, same thing, it's just the much higher quality version of the overseas. The, this, the, the metal that this is made of is much better quality. Um, another thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna use a lock washer. If you'll notice when I took that off, there was no lock washer on there. It was just the bottom nut uh, loops through and then there was the standard washer and the top, uh, uh, the nut that secures it down but there was nothing to lock that on there. And that's how these things can get loose and start spinning around. So I am going to use this output jack. It's called a pure tone. A lot of my customers have been bringing me these lately. They're really cool. See the old style, um, they've been using this output jack for decades. The way it works is it's one temp connection and then the sleeve. These new ones are really cool because when you plug that in, if you can see, it has two tip connections. It's holding it from either side. And if you look here, it has two sleeve connections too. That's really nice because it won't move. It won't move off of it. Um, one of the design flaws of the old Switchcraft system or uh, hardware is that when you move this off, sometimes that can detach itself. Sometimes the uh, sleeve connection can get tarnished or corroded, and it's not as good a contact. So we are gonna use this Pure Tone output jack. Um, so to show you how to do this, I need to teach you the basics of soldering. Don't be afraid of soldering. This is something you can do. It is really not difficult to pull this off, but Half of this is just using the correct hardware. If you'll notice, I'm using a Hakko soldering iron. I've worked alongside Amptex. A lot of them use this iron. This is meant to be turned on in the morning and run all day long. And if you'll notice, I'm running at 750 degrees. Um, back in the day, I used to use this. This is the mistake I've seen a lot of people make. In any soldering, you'll use like a wand style. This is my old Sears Craftsman. And it was actually cool. I've wired up hundreds of guitars with this. But if you look here, this is a 45 watt gun. Um, this will get it done um, using like thin solder. And you know, you could wire up a guitar with this as long as that 6040 rosin core, you're okay to go. The mistake you can make is if you run a 25 watt gun. That is not hot enough to get your metal, uh, to get the solder to flow, to actually key on to metal. It's almost like you're getting into brazing. You need to get the metal hot in order for the solder to, to, to conduct. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna knock off these old points there in the wire. Remember the white is the ground and the red is the tip connection, the hot. So I'm gonna strip that back just a little bit. I'm gonna spin the wire. Notice I'm putting a cloth over the guitar. I want to protect the finish. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my gun at 750 degrees. Um, I like to use this solder. It's a Kester. Uh, it's a 60-40 rosin core. I like the, uh, what is it, one and a half millimeter thickness. It's a little thicker. Um, this is totally your preference. A lot of people like using this stuff. As you can see, that's much thinner. I like the, I like the thick stuff. I like to get it done. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna tin. So always wanna make sure that tip is clean. What we want to avoid when we're soldering, see that tip, see how it's silver? That means it's clean. What we want to avoid anytime you're soldering is a cold solder joint. And it's obvious when you get a cold joint because it'll turn gray. We want silver beads on there, we don't want gray. Check this out, so I'm gonna get a little on the tip there. Let the flux do its thing. We're gonna key onto the metal. See that? When you run at 750 degrees, that's the result. What you always wanna do is get it really hot, really fast, and then get out. Get in, get out. Quick, quick, quick. If you leave a soldering iron on the back of a pot casing, you can mess up the wiper. You wanna get in and out fast. So I'm gonna tin these wires too. That's what I'm doing here, it's called tinning. So what I'm doing is getting a little on the tip. 
and let that run down the wire. And notice where my drop cloth is. It's over the guitar, protecting the finish. And again, I just soldered, clean it. Always keeping that tip clean. Um, they do make something called a helping hands, and those are really cool because it's like these, uh, they're like alligator clips that come in. So you can actually hold the, the output jack, and it'll like kind of like hold the, the component in there because you do not have three arms. <laughs> but honestly, the longer you do this, you'll just kind of learn how to do it without that. Um, we want to follow the path of this really quick. Okay, this pin right there is hot connection. That's going to the tip. Other pin, as you can see here, it's going to the sleeve. So remember my connections? The white wire is the ground, and the red wire is the hot. So that one is going to go to the top. Oh, one more thing. Don't want to forget. I always forget the heat shrink. Almost forgot to do that. We want to put some heat shrink tubing on there too. Oh, the tubing. Honestly, I get this at Harbor Freight. I get, a, I get as much stuff as I can from Harbor Freight. If you can't get it at Harbor Freight, you don't need it. All right. So where's my connection? Red is hot. So remember I tend to the wire. I'm going to put this out here, get a little on that tip. Now I don't need to pull the wire through the, the eyelet of the pin, so like that. And then white wire is ground. See how quick that was? In and out. 750 degrees. Use your Kester 6040. You'll get it done. Don't use 25 watts. It's not hot enough. Okay, now I'm going to pull my heat shrink tubing out. Now there's two ways that I can actually shrink that on there. Um, I use heat shrink tubing just to protect the actual points that I just did. I don't want it to hit anything in there. Um, it's just about protection. Um, I could use a heat gun on there if I wanted to just heat them up. Honestly, the way most shops do it, most guitar shops I've worked at, let's hit it with the lighter real quick. Just keep that lighter away from any nitro. Your finish. In and out, man. There you go. And I do realize I just told you to use open flame to fix a guitar. That's how we all do it. So, anyway, now I'm going to put a lock washer on there. And then the cup input goes back on. See my lock washer? That keeps that secure. So when I land that thing, it stays put. I don't want that output jack to twist. And there's a retaining nut on the outside. Honestly, getting it threaded is probably the hardest part. Just take your time. Guitar repair is slow, very slow. You work slow, you do good work. I know it's hard to go three miles an hour in an 80 mile an hour world, but just go three miles an hour. That's how you do good, clean work. And eventually, you will win, just like I did. Okay, now, I want to use a nut driver. Again, Harbor Freight. And there you go. Honestly, half the time I get this set, and then I just take the adjustable screwdriver. That's a good truss rod tool, by the way, sometimes. So in there, I have the finished product right there, nice and clean. Put that back in. And before we button it up, let's do a little test, made sure we did it right. Yep, we're cool. And then you get to find your screws. <laughs> Put those back in. Remember what I said, we hold the bottom of the screwdriver all the time. There we go. See that? That's how you know you got it fixed. When I move that, I don't want to hear any that, 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 that. I want that to be dead clean. And there you go. New output jack. Isn't that easy? That's how you do it. <laughs>